And on the organ, lyricist, composer, well the world and Irving, the person will become very inaccessible to the general public. I'm going to go more into isolation. He was hurt. His father was one way, his mother was another way, and he was left in Hampton. And then he got into music. They said, you know, if you could write music, you could make a lot of money. I said, how much? Well, the nerve and I got together and composed a tune. Nina wanted to free herself from the piano. As you know, she was a gifted pianist. Is well, the nerve Nina and well, something like oil and water. He was in a situation of playing an instrument that could very easily disturb what Nina was doing. We got two keyboards. So. We need to start our own and not depending on the RCAs and the Columbias to finally decide they're going to record us. The record companies couldn't control them. He went on his own with his albums. He had them in the back of the trunk of his car. And here's a shot of Weldon Irvine, the studio. And I said, I want to sing about something that is socially and morally relevant. Liberated Brother was my first album as a leader. Liberated in the sense of total freedom. People started to listen, and when people started to listen, the others started to watch. Richard Pryor, yeah. Tom Moore, Mary McKeever, Weldon Irvine, Satan Weldon Sinead, Irvine's Joseph Rosa early approval remember. of jazz and hip-hop fusion set him apart. I definitely wouldn't even say that I had an experience with Weldon Irvine, period. I met Master Well. When you speak to him, call him Master Well. Don't call him Weldon Irvine. This is MC name. Yeah, Master Well. So, huh? I was laughing. But he was very serious about it. Go out and get what I have to get. Go out and say what I have to say with no fear. That was the beauty of Weldon. He wasn't afraid. Uh, young, Gifted, and Broke was, in fact, a musical. It tells the story of young artisans who don't have much money. Weldon's all about taking control of your own artistic destiny. A little sense of sort of the emotional scars that he emerged from his childhood with. He said, man, I need your help. I need a little help. And that disturbed me because I never heard him say that before. So we sat down and said, He didn't cry. He, he didn't cry. But one time, I would look in the mirror and say, now, well, then you've got to look calm. His son was with him. That's right. Digging for Weldon Irvine, for me, it's a little different. It's digging for my dad, so I don't really have to dig that far.